Hi everybody, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And today's short video is going to deal with how to undertake an independent samples t-test through SPSS. Okay, so I think first what we should do is we should familiarize ourselves with the data set that we're going to be relying upon for this particular analysis. Uh, this data set are the, is the result uh, of a survey that was undertaken on 106 employees uh, from a local organization. And the survey itself was comprised of 11 questions, uh, le the f with the first question uh, dealing with an employee's gender. Uh, whether they were male or female, the second question dealing with an employee's age, and more importantly their age with respect to five previously defined categories of age. And the next nine questions labelled here WC1 to WC9 were five questions or five items uh, that were used to construct a variable uh, that represented an employee's overall satisfaction or dissatisfaction with their working conditions. And the results of these five or these nine items here uh, are down the final column here labelled employee working conditions perception. Uh, I suppose I should say at this particular stage that the employee working conditions perception scale uh, is a scale that has been previously validated uh, uh, within the literature uh, and we won't be undertaking a revalidation of these particular items in this particular video but we'll look at a revalidation uh, in a later video. Uh, but for our purposes, what we're interested in is we're inter interested in undertaking an independent samples t-test. Uh, and most importantly, I suppose, really what we're interested in is we're interested in whether there is any differences between the average response of males on the working conditions perception scale compared to average responses of females on the working conditions perception scale. Okay, so to undertake this particular test of difference, yeah, uh, what we'll do is we'll go to the menu options along the top bar here within SPSS. We'll choose Analyze. From the drop-down list, we choose Compare Means. And from the subsequent drop-down list, we choose Independent Samples T-Test. You can probably see that I've already set this up here, so let me just actually reset this particular pane uh, so I can actually show you the steps that we'll actually follow to, to uh, define our variables. Uh, so what we're interested in is our test variable is the employee working conditions perception variable. So we need to define that variable in the test variables uh, section of this particular window here. If I scroll down to the end here, the employee working conditions perception scale variable is the last variable in the list. And I'm going to move that across here to the test variable section. Now what we're interested in is we're interested in two samples uh, that are that are encoded within this particular variable. Uh, I suppose we're interested in the male responses compared to the female responses. Uh, so there's two groups uh, defined within this particular scale here and we need to define those groups within the grouping variable or the grouping variable field here within, within SPSS. So the variable that we're going to use to group the working conditions perception scale is the gender variable. So I'm going to select gender and I'm going to move it across to the grouping variables field here. Okay, so what we need to do next is we need to define the groups or the numerical measures that are the numerical numbers that we've associated with each level of measurement for the gender variable. And actually if we go to the variable view window within SPSS down here in the left hand side, variable view is highlighted there, and if we look at the gender variable but more importantly, if we look at the values associated with the gender variable, we can actually see that the value labels that we've defined is we've defined a numerical value of 1 to be associated with males and a numerical value of 2 to be associated with females. So that's what we need to define within the grouping variables, define groups option here within SPSS. So what we'll do is we click the Define Groups uh, button uh, and what we do is we define the numerical values that are associated with each of, our, for each of our groups. So we could define 1 for males and we'll define 2 for females. Okay, just done now. Let's hit Continue. We'll hit Continue and then let's hit OK. 
and what we get is we get the output uh, window appears in SPSS and the results of this analysis are showing under this particular heading which is t-test. Let me just actually grab this window here and pull it across to the left so we can actually see both tables. Okay. So you can see that the results or the output of the independent samples t-test, there are two tables. The first table labelled group statistics and the second table labelled independent samples test. So let's just actually have a look at the group statistics in a little bit more detail first. I'm just going to double click on this so I can actually highlight some of these cells. Okay, so the variable that is listed here is the variable employees working conditions perception. Uh, and there's two levels of measurement. We have the males and we have the females. And what this variable or what these statistics are telling us is that there were 64 males in this particular study. The average response on the employee working conditions perception scale was 30.48. And the associated standard deviation of this particular sample uh, was 4.008 and the standard error of the mean uh, is 0 0.501. With respect to the females, uh, we had 42 females in this particular study. The average response of the females was 23.45 and the standard deviation associated with the female sampled here was 3.094 and the standard error of the sampling distribution uh, is 0 0.477 okay so what we're really interested in is we're interested in whether there's a significant difference between the average response of males compared to the average response of females now looking at these particular two mean values here there seems to be a difference but let's just keep in mind that the standard deviations in both cases are you know they are pretty big as well yeah uh, so for us to understand whether there's a significant difference between these two mean values we need to look at the results of our independent samples t-test okay so the independent samples t-test uh, table is structured uh, in, in a certain way. It's well defined. I suppose there's three subtables. The first section here, or the first subtable here. The next table here labels Levine's test of equality of variances. And the final table that we have is listed across here, which is labeled t-test for equality of means. Okay, and we're interested in the output of the t-test for equality of means. So let's maybe just concentrate on that particular table first. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on this table uh, so that we can actually we can actually just maybe highlight some of these cells here so we can actually see what we're talking about. Okay, so I'm concentrating on the output of the t-test for equality of means subtable. Uh, and what we can actually see is that subtable has a number of columns with each column labeled appropriately. Uh, and then within, under each column we have two output rows. We have the first row here of values associated with each of the column headings. And we have the second row of values along here associated also with the column headings. Now one thing to keep in mind uh, for our t-test for equality of means is that there's two variants of the t-test. Uh, one set of values when we assume that the samples have been drawn from populations that have equal population variances. In that case, if it is the case that the samples have been drawn from populations with equal population variances, we rely on the first row of results within the sub the subtable t-test for equality of means. If, on the other hand, the samples have been drawn from populations that have unequal population variances, we're going to rely on the second row in this particular table. So we need to make a decision. We need to des decide on whether we're working off the first row, that's equal population variances assumed, or the second row, unequal population variances assumed. And actually to make that decision what we're going to rely on is we're going to rely on the results of what's known as the Levine's test for equality of variances. And actually the results of that test are listed within this part of the independent samples t-test output.
And we see that there's two subheadings here. There's one called F, which is the F statistic uh, for the ratio of the two variances. Uh, and we have the significance uh, associated with this particular test. The F statistic for this test, the comparison of the two.